This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan, with your host, Nancy Smitham. And get the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joyton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Amanda Bubaltz from Alpena County Library. Good morning, Amanda, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And you are from the Reference Library, and you mm -hmm. have some wonderful news about a grant that you are in the running for. Yes, very exciting. Um, it's called the Michigan Digital Newspaper Project. It's in conjunction with the Clark Historical Library at Central Michigan University. And we applied for this grant, and we were chosen as one of the top five wow. semi-finalists. Um, but in the final course of obtaining this grant, which is, of course, our goal, um, we are asking for community support. Okay, what do we have to do? I want you to get it. Okay. <laughs> we would really like your support. Um, so what you need to do... Um, it will be happening the third week of January, um, either by sending in a tweet, and the address is hashtag digalpina, um, or sending a Michigan postcard to the address, um, it will be listed here on this um, screen, um, the Clark Historical Library, just showing support for Alpina. Um, each tweet that gets sent receives one vote, and each postcard that gets sent receives actually 100 votes. Wow. So we're really encouraging people to send postcards, and um, we will have postcards available at the library for people to send to the Clark Historical Library. How often can we vote? Um, voting, well, as far as I am informed, um, each person is allowed one tweet okay. for each account. I think they keep track of that. Okay. Um, but we're really encouraging the, the postcards and... Um, so I could stop by and pick up a postcard for every member of my family. We could write on there, go Alpina, and then drop them in the mail. Yes, definitely. And um, there is a time frame involved. Um, the tweets are to be sent January 19th through the 25th okay. um, for one vote. And once again, that's hashtag digalpina. Mm -hmm. And then the postcards are to be received January 19th through the 30th. Okay. And each postcard receives um, 100 votes. And um, yeah. So what are we going to do with this grant when we get it? Yeah, well, the grant, it's, it's really exciting. Um, it allows us to digitize old historical newspapers and really oh. preserve them. So the grant is for um, $2,500 and with that $2,500 it allows us to, to scan and digitize um, 12,500 pages wow. of newspaper. And um, what we've chosen, um, we've chosen these old newspapers. One of them is the Michigan Labor Journal which was published in Alpena from 1884 until 1890. Wow. That would be completely digitized. Um, and then we also have chosen pages from the Alpena News from 1899 through 1910. Um, so, and that would be available not only to Alpena's community, but the entire world at large. Anybody doing searches on the internet would be able to pull up these, these documents really of just telling about the town in, in the day and the times, you know, a time way before Facebook, Twitter, even in some cases electricity, you know, this was how people found out the news of the day and about the people. Yes. So it's a wonderful, it would be a wonderful resource. So it's very exciting and we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. Just have to vote. Mm -hmm. Yep. Voting is the, voting is the most important thing. We really, like I said, we're in the ranks now with, there's five libraries, and so the library get, that gets the largest amount of these votes will receive the grant. And it's on the website, alpinalibrary.org. Yes. So make sure you look there and you can find it out too. But stop by the library, pick up the cards, and just drop them in the mails, painless and easy, and yeah. get a vote um, for our library. We really need to get this service. That's really yep. wonderful. Yeah, for sure. Check out our website if you would like any more um, additional information. Call the library or 
stop in. And once again, voting will start the third week of January, January 19th. Okay. So, All right, get those cards and get them ready yep, to go. Definitely get the cards. Okay, and you have a lot of other wonderful activities <laughs> coming up. Yep, it's a, a, it's a busy place at the library. Now that um, the hustle and bustle of Christmas has left us, we do have some upcoming events um, I would like to let the community know about. We have what's called the Preschool Play Date. That is going to be the second Thursday of each month for the next three months. Um, this is for children ages three to five years old, accompanied by a parent or caregiver. Um, it's just a time to socialize with other children, um, play, share, work on social skills, and there's no registration needed okay. for that. Wonderful. Um, and another event we have coming up, this is a really great one, it's called Fun Time with Dad. And this is for dads with children anywhere from the age of preschool up till fifth grade. Um, they're welcome to come create projects. They're actually going to share a meal and just hopefully have some fun, oh, yeah. quality time, father, child time. And that's Saturday, January 17th from okay. 11 until 1. Um, and they, we are registering for that one. Okay. So please call the library to register. Space is limited. All right. Yep. Um, genealogy. We do have a project coming up, um, a workshop called How to Start Your Family Tree. And that's an introduction to genealogy. Saturday, January 24th, that's from 1 until 3 p.m. Fastest growing hobby in the U.S. It is, it is, and we love it. Just come on down to the library. Um, that's put on by um, Northeast Michigan Genealogical Society and our Special Collections Department. Okay. So, um, and lastly coming up, we have a rhythm music dance program. Um, this is presented by Vicki Van Wagnen, um, children any age are welcome um, to perform just music and rhythm and how music and rhythm enrich our lives. That's Saturday, January 31st from 1 until 2 p.m. Okay, and I think we have enough time left to talk about tax forms. It's that time of year. Oh, it is that time of year. <laughs> so I guess the, the point I'd like to make about tax forms is that um, beginning, they will be available beginning at the beginning of February. Um, and that's also for AA. RP volunteers. So all those will be available for the community beginning of February. Okay, so. and now we'll just mention voting again. Um, give me the addresses on the screen for people to send, or you can come to the library, pick up a card, and get the address mm -hmm. there. And it's what's the tweet address? The tweet is hashtag dig. Alpina. Okay. Or, and that gets one vote, but a postcard gets a hundred. So stop by, pick up one for every member of the family, get it out in the mail on the 19th so that we know our votes mm -hmm. can count so we can get this wonderful grant for our library. Yeah, it would be, we would be just overjoyed if we got this grant. Yay, so we, we're going to get it. <laughs> thank you so much, Amanda. Yep, and I look forward to talking much. to someone next month about what else is happening. Yep. Thank you very thank much, you. Nancy. Please stay tuned. I'll be right back following these messages. Welcome back. My last guest today is Christine Wotulski from Besser Museum. Happy New Year, Chris. Happy New Year's to you, Nancy. And before we get started with what's exciting news for this year, how did Season of Light go? Season of Light was a great success. We have so much fun with the Christmas time. We host lots of children, their parents, and their teachers, and it's just fun sharing some Christmas traditions and stories, and so it was a great time. And you had all those Christmas trees? Which we have been working on taking down. Okay. So the last week after we came back from the New Year's has been dismantling Christmas. It's always kind of a sad time to see it come Happy down. Happy sad. Yeah, but so that has been a busy time in preparing for January's exhibits. And in 2016, Besser Museum is going to be 50 years yeah. old. That is the one thing we're focusing on too this whole year is preparing for our 50th anniversary. Um, in May 19, 1966, the museum was officially open to the public. So we have a year to get ready for that. And it's kind of exciting time. Yes. You know, we are so fortunate to have the museum. And when Jesse Besser first um, got together with Dr. Wilson and Fred Traufa, their intent was to build a state of the art museum that educated in art, history, and science. And really, it's continued to do that yes, for 50 years. It has. So it's been really exciting. It's exciting to be a part of that. And one of the things that Jesse Besser really wanted was a planetarium. Mm -hmm. And so if you read the history, it was the community 
that got together and helped raise funds to put the planetarium in the museum. Ah. Jesse Besser had given so much to the actual construction of the facility and then some of the artifacts that had gone into those. Fred Trelfa had donated some collections. Um, one of the first purchases was the Haltiner collection. And so the community, uh, as a gift back to Jesse Besser, raised the funds to put in the planetarium. And it has been functioning for 50 years. Wow. So one of our goals is to uh, look into upgrading, doing a digital upgrade and bringing the um, planetarium to the new technology, Ooh, state of the art. So That'll be exciting. So how are you going to get started doing this? So we've been doing a little bit of research and we have a special event coming up January 23rd and 24th actually, okay. where we will have two uh, professional planetarium technicians coming to the museum talking to the community. We're going to invite community members and there's going to be a chance for the community at large to come to the museum to participate in this and talk about um, all the things that you have to think about when you are upgrading and um, the equipment that's available and the capabilities. Ah. So last year Matt Linke is now the director of the University of Michigan's planetarium and they too are upgrading their planetarium. Ah. So he actually hosted a special presentation about a year and a half ago at the museum to look at some equipment they wanted to use. So we kind of got a precursor to what we're going to do in a couple weeks. And I'll tell you, Nancy, it was so exciting to see the capabilities From of 50 years ago to now, unbelievable what technology, what technology do. has done. Oh, yes. And it takes it beyond just astronomy. There are geology programs, biology programs, art wow. programs. Um, so we're really excited. And this um, meetings that we'll have on the 23rd and the 24th will give the community partners and the museum board uh, opportunity to see what's available, questions to ask, things to consider, and we're hoping that we will be able to actually unveil new planetarium wow. for the 50th. Wouldn't that be great? That would be wonderful. So yeah, and I also um, am excited to say that Matt Linky will do a special public presentation Saturday, January 24th at 1 p.m. Okay. So rather than our, you know, regular planetarium program that we do every Saturday, it will be Matt Linky hosting, I believe it's called, let me look at his notes, uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Oh, that'll and be good. So, and Matt is such a great presenter. If you haven't had a chance to uh, see him do a public planetarium presentation, this would be a great time to come. Yeah. So that's Saturday, January 24th at 1 p.m. And then for the other programs, if somebody is interested in what we're doing with the planetarium and want to be involved, um, learn more about it, they can always call the museum at 356-2202. And now um, you're launching your membership drive too, a good time to, to join the Founders Society or the um, Friends of the Museum, a chance right. to, you get tickets to special events and you get to be a part of everything that goes on. You have a say about things, so this is right. a good time to do that. Exactly. We always encourage uh, people to become a member at Besser Museum. You know, if you go online or come into the museum and pick up a brochure, you'll see that the membership rates really are reasonable. They are. And to know that your membership doesn't just give you benefits of being able to come to all of our events, you know, throughout the year for free, uh, getting our publications in the mail, but also a way to support what was started 50 years ago. Yes. And so it's being a part of something larger than yourself. So being a member of the museum is not just something important, but something you can be proud of. So we encourage, if you're not a museum member, please join up, call, find out how you can become a member today. Yes. And um, what's also being a member, you get firsthand of what is going on. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about what's going on in January. Yes. We are bringing out some exhibits that have not been displayed for a very long time. And one of them is the Michigan maps. Ooh. So we have a historical map collection starting from the 1700s up through like the 1900s. Wow. And so it's really interesting to see how um, 
the depiction of what they thought Michigan looked like uh, at the time and how it changed. And we have ones that are from like French interpretation, German interpretation. Uh, I forget how many if there's like 60 of them, wow. but those are going to be on display. The other thing that will be on display is our furniture collection. Ooh. And it kind of plays a dual role. So part of the mission of the museum, as you know, is to um, preserve artifacts. And so to do that, we have to have the rooms at a certain temperature, you know, they have to be, the shelving has to be just right, everything has to be uh, labeled and accounted for and cataloged. And so one of the rooms that is being worked on right now is the furniture storage room. Ooh. So as we work on that, the benefit gets to um, get treated to seeing all this furniture that's normally not on display. And Great. some of it is absolutely beautiful. So that'll be wonderful. Yeah. So, and then the other one is an artwork, Myrtle Longstreet, and she's going to be on display. Um, I believe she was from the Hillman area. Okay. And so you can learn a little bit more about her and come in and see her large uh, oil paintings. So, yeah, always something new and different at the museum. So come in, um, see the displays, you know, buy tickets, come to the events, lots of things to do, and look forward to listening to more news about the um, upgrades of the planetarium. Exactly, and participate in the upgrades. Yes. You know, if you have an interest in astronomy, if um, you are able to support some of these programs, we would invite you to come and, and learn more and um, see where you could benefit. You know, what's interesting is the legacies that people leave. Oh, and yes. so we always talk about Jesse Besser, and he was so generous to the community. But reading through the histories and preparing for our 50th anniversary, um, you know, Fred Traufa was oh. someone that worked at Alpina Fletcher yeah. Paper Company. And he was somebody that loved history. And so he has made a contribution that continues, you know, long after he's gone. And same with Dr. Wilson. He was the superintendent at the Alpena Public Schools. Yes. And so uh, his name will be forever remembered in our community through the Besser Museum. And so there are people out there that really have a heart for education. They have a heart for our community and for leaving that legacy. And we want to hear from them. Yes, we do. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Christine. Look forward to talking to you next month. Thanks, Nancy. I'll be right back with Dr. Olin Joynton following these messages. Good morning. I am Jay Walterwright, Director of Public Information and Marketing for Alpena Community College. And this is the ACC portion of Talk of the Town. With me this morning is Mary Jean Thompson and Matt Bedard, two instructors in our professional, professional occupations department. Uh, department. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to be here. It's nice to have you here. Uh, Matt, um, uh, you were recently hired by ACC. I was. Uh, as business instructor, correct? Yes. Why don't you uh, tell our viewers a little bit about that. How did you come to ACC? It was a grand journey. Uh, I started, the, uh, my, my family is from here, generations upon generations, uh, this is where I'm from. Uh, I left as a very small child uh, this area as my dad took a teaching job down in southern Michigan. And so that's where I really grew up and went to school and uh, graduated. After graduation, I went into the Air Force and that's where I spent a career, Ooh. 26 years. Uh, my wife and I toured the globe and Ooh. I spent most of my career in civil engineering. Uh, so that's a little bit of my background, working with, with a lot of contractors and, and, and that, that type of thing throughout my career. And I really was an adult learner myself. I went into the Air Force right after high school, and that's when I started taking college classes. Um, it went all the way through on to an MBA and, and finished my, my business degrees. When it came time to retire, my wife and I were trying to decide where are we going to retire to. And uh, I told her I would not live anywhere south of Alpena. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is where we loved uh, coming back to. This is where all of our family is from. And so this was home mm -hmm. uh, uh, for us. And so when we came back here, I knew I wanted to teach. Uh, throughout my time in the Air Force, I always gravitated towards those opportunities to try to teach somebody. And I just loved the intrinsic rewards of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when the opportunity for, to teach at ACC became available, uh, I jumped all over it. This is a dream come true for me. This is absolutely what I wanted to do. Well, great. Now, we've mentioned that you're a business instructor. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means, what type of classes you'll be teaching that 
that type of thing? Absolutely. We have a full array of business courses that we're offering here. And it's one of the things that's so exciting about teaching at ACC is we're not just teaching introduction to business and we're not just teaching the one marketing course. Uh, we have a full array. Even under the marketing program, we have those uh, communications and interactive pieces of marketing like advertising and personal selling uh, that fits into that marketing you know, perspective. Um, and then under the business, we have the business management portion of it where we teach a lot of the administrative type courses, uh, personnel management, uh, leadership and supervision. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the small business management portion of it as well, which really gears towards those small entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, that want to jump in and start their own businesses. And so we have a lot of the courses that are really geared towards that spectrum as well. I know there's a lot of interest for entrepreneurial studies. The government or the governor of Michigan is encouraging that type of activity. So. I'm Absolutely. sure that there'll be a number of students who are interested in that. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we're excited. We're excited about it because it's ever-changing, especially with the onset of e-commerce now mm -hmm. and bringing all of those small business aspects into the electronic age onto the online shopping and, and retailing and wholesaling. Uh, so it's ever-changing, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's an exciting part for us. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, Mary Jane, you were saying that uh, we didn't have a business instructor for a short while. Can you talk about how uh, adding Matt to the mix is going to uh, enhance your department and the offerings of the college? Oh, we are thoroughly excited to have Matt on board. This position has been vacant for three years, so mm -hmm. it's a great, great thing to have him finally in place. Um, we, he, he's in control of five programs at the institution, mm -hmm. business management, business administration, marketing, small business management, and a small business management one-year certificate. Mm -hmm. And those fit into our department very well. We have 28 programs in the professional occupations department. Mm -hmm. Matt's gonna take charge of these, but we're hopeful and looking forward to him redeveloping the curriculum for some of those programs, enhancing them with the new things he's just mentioned, bringing some of the classes to the online delivery format, as well as a lot of other things that are on the plate that we've been talking about in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, spring semester is your first semester full, as a full-time employee, correct? As a, as a full-time instructor, yes. Great. So what are you teaching? Oh, this semester, gosh, I have marketing, um, advertising, personal selling, introduction to business. We're doing a couple of uh, independent study programs where we actually have some internship students that are working downtown, and I'm very excited about that because it's one of the things that I really want to bring on and refresh for the college is mm -hmm. opening up some of those opportunities for some of those businesses that we have coming in mm -hmm. and inviting them to see what we have for students. And the reward for that is our students getting the chance to actually have some real world if you will, w working experience sure. with some of these businesses downtown. Yeah. And uh, so I'm very excited to start that up this semester So as what well. are the students doing? I'm very curious. Oh, we have one, uh, actually both of them are working with the unmanned drone project that we have out at the airport. Mm -hmm. And some of those internships, they're getting a chance to really work with some of the communications pieces and, and uh, some of the uh, administrative pieces of that. And so they're going to get a chance to really interact and work with a really new and growing technology and mm -hmm. so we're very excited about that part. Mm -hmm. Another asset Matt really brings to our institution is his experience in um, administering business contracts in about 30 countries worldwide. Wow. His yeah. international business experience is tremendous and we are very grateful to have that. Oh. Students will benefit tremendously. Great. Um, so what else can students look forward to in your classes? What type of experiences and activities? Well, as Mary Jane said, uh, one of the benefits of being in the Air Force for as long as I was is I got to tour the globe uh, multiple times over. Mm -hmm. So I have tons of real world stories that I can share uh, with students. Uh, working with large contractors, large businesses, all the way down to the small entrepreneurs and, and family-owned single businesses uh, that help support the Department of Defense. And uh, so I have some great stories that I can share, uh, for one. But the other thing is, is we're, we're really looking to take some of that um, those opportunities learned from when I was in the far stretches of just here in the United States, from Alaska to Florida to Texas, and bringing some of those business opportunities that we've learned, being able to bring them up here and really share them with our students. So our students get a perspective much larger than just Alpena. Mm -hmm. uh, they really get to see business from across the nation. Okay. Many of his classes are project-based. Matt did teach with us for two semesters as an adjunct right. instructor. Mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. him in action already on some of these projects, but for example, in the small business management class, 
they write an entire business plan, like a 30-page document. It's a document students can leave the class with and take to the ban bank for financing to start up a small business. In his mar advertising class, he does an advertising campaign, marketing right. class, a marketing plan. All of this is yeah. great experience for students for the real world. Well, I should attend your class because every day uh, I deal with people who don't know the difference between advertising and marketing and public relations and so it's always a challenge for me to explain how those all work together as part of the communications plan. Oh absolutely, bring uh, them down. So uh, and you can be very helpful to me um, to help explain those things because you know I was just an English major so <laughs> uh, I'm doing the best I can with what I have. But uh, well that's just about all of our time. Um, Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yep, and uh, welcome to ACC. Thank you. And Mary Jane, thank you for joining me. Thank you. And, and thank you for joining me. Uh, once again, I am Jay Walter Wright, Director of Public Information and Marketing for Alpena Community College, and this is Talk of the Town. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smith and Dr. Owen Jordan. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at www.wbkb11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.